Welcome to Myositis in Focus, a day of remembrance. Honoring and remembering those who have lost their lives due to complications of the inflammatory myopathies, myositis. This event is in partnership with our very generous sponsors, Corbis Pharmaceuticals, Idera Pharmaceuticals, and Diplomat Specialty Infusion Group. We light this virtual candle as a representation of hope for the future in memory of those who died fighting the inflammatory myopathies, what we call myositis, and for those that are currently fighting for their life right now. We would like to begin with a moment of silence. If you pray or meditate, we ask that you do so now in memory of those families that have lost someone and for those currently fighting, followed by a reading. You've just walked on ahead of me, and I've got to understand. You must release the ones you love and let go of their hand. I try and cope the best I can, but I'm missing you so much. If I could only see you and once more feel your touch. Yes, you've just walked on ahead of me. Don't worry, I'll be fine. But now and then I swear I feel your hand slip into mine. While we want this live video event to be perfect for you and in honor of those we have lost, we are at the mercy of technology and apologize in advance for any technical issues. An edited version of this video will be available towards the end of May. We join together today in memory of our family members and friends to honor and to remember those we have lost. In doing so, it is also a call to action to iterate the urgent need for safe, effective, and accessible therapies, the importance of patients getting involved in clinical trials and research projects, the opportunities for sharing data with industry and research collaborations, and to increase education, outreach, awareness, and funding. We mourn the loss of each patient, many of whom we have had the privilege to meet in our support groups or at a myositis conference. At MSU, Myositis Support and Understanding Association, we provide many support options for patients, caregivers, family members, and friends, and support is how we got started. Through our support groups and our live online support sessions, we get the opportunity to meet many new people from various walks of life with at least one thing in common, myositis. And when we lose someone to this disease, as patients, it becomes very personal, especially for those recently diagnosed and who have not yet had the opportunity to see other patients that have been living with myositis for decades. And on this end, as volunteers at MSU, we often feel a sense of helplessness. 
That helplessness feeling turns into a deeper passion and a stronger determination to continue working diligently for the myositis community. MSU is an all-volunteer managed nonprofit organization empowering the myositis community. All of our volunteers and board members are either myositis patients, caregivers, or a family member of a patient. Thus, everyone has a personal connection to myositis that adds value to their contributions and to the decisions they make on our behalf. Hi, this is Emily Fillmore. I am one of the founding board members of Myositis Support and Understanding, and I'm also the author of The Marvelous Transformation, Living Well with Autoimmune Disease. I wanted to talk to you briefly today about why we thought it was important to do a Day of Remembrance as part of Myositis Awareness Month this year in May of 2018. The reason that we think it's really important to do a Day of Remembrance, in my opinion, and in my talks with Jerry Williams, the, uh, the founder and the current president, the original president, I guess I should say, uh, is that we have lost so many people to dermatomyositis, polymyositis, and IBM, which is inclusion body myositis. These are known as the inflammatory myopathies. The reason we think it's so important, though, is that whenever we lose someone specifically that we know in our groups or when we hear of other people that have passed on either due to infections or um, interstitial lung disease, uh, infections might be um, pneumonia or um, you know bronchitis or other kind of secondary infections, cancers um, or even myositis complications it hits us all very hard, and we know that the family members who lose people to the myositis disease itself or to the complications or infections that are secondary, they struggle with it because, you know, when you look at us, we don't look sick, right? Um, and that's what makes it so hard is we look like we should be walking around in the world just fine, but when you, when you meet people who have myositis, we are in various stages of ability and disability. Our caregivers are very important to us. And that also means then that if people with one of the myositis types end up passing on, that their caregivers are highly affected by it because they've not that any family member that loses someone isn't affected by it, but if they've been a caregiver, they've been intricately involved in the day-to-day -day living. When you think about the number of people that we've lost in our groups and the number of people that we've heard about that have been lost due to myositis, it is a tragedy any time that someone dies young or before their time or from the disease. But in our group, we consistently see people passing away. And so it's difficult for people with patients that are patients with the same disease to see someone has passed away because it gets very personal then. Not only do we know them, but then it starts to make you think, am I next? We want to do it for a couple of reasons. One, we want to remember those of our friends who have gone before us, the people that we know, but also our comrades in myositis who have gone before us that we maybe didn't get a chance to meet. We also want to do it to give each of us hope because when I first was diagnosed and I read about my disease, I read that there was a five-year prognosis. I don't see that in the literature that much anymore today. They've come so far with learning how to manage it even though there aren't any current FDA-approved medications. And there are so many wonderful studies going on with the pharmaceutical companies and the research groups that are working very hard to come out with medications that are going to help us. They've also made some great breakthroughs in the last few years. While the day is going to be sad that we're thinking about the people who have left us, it, we want it to be a day of hope and a day that we can reflect on the past where we didn't have a whole lot of hope, but maybe going forward we can start to see that there is new stuff coming on the horizon. Gerald Jerry Nordzik. Jerry's wife, Kathy, says, 
My husband's symptoms of inclusion body myositis began in 2007. He was diagnosed in 2012 and passed away suddenly in 2016 at the age of 76 from dysphagia. He was devoted to his family and friends and was strong in his Christian faith and a very patriotic man. As a retired nurse, Kathy was a well-prepared caregiver for Jerry when he became physically dependent during his last year. Jerry and Kathy celebrated their 55th wedding anniversary in July 2016 with their son, a Lutheran pastor, performing a renewal of vows for them in their home with family and friends in attendance. Susie Edmondson Susie's daughter, Monica, says, my mom got dermatomyositis at age 56 while taking a cholesterol-lowering drug. She ended up in a nursing home at age 58 and she passed away at age 65. She was an amazing and strong lady. As we look back over time, we find ourselves wondering, did we remember to thank you enough for all you have done for us? For all the times you were by our sides to help and support us, to celebrate our successes, to understand our problems and accept our defeats, or for teaching us by your example, the value of hard work, good judgment, courage, and integrity. We wonder if we ever thanked you for the sacrifices you made to let us have the very best and for the simple things like laughter, smiles, and times we shared. If we have forgotten to show our gratitude enough for all the things that you did, we're thanking you now. And we are hoping you knew all along how much you meant to us. Joe Gayona Jr. Joe's wife, Mary, says, Joe was a healthy 51-year-old when he was diagnosed with dermatomyositis in 2016. He died June 30, 2017 from complications due to dermatomyositis. Joe was a kind and wonderful person and is missed daily. Joe and Mary met over 25 years ago and enjoyed riding their Harleys together. Joe also loved to play the guitar. What can you say to someone who has always been one of the most essential parts of your world? Someone who took you by the hand when you were little and helped to show the way? What do you say to someone who stood by to help you grow, providing love, strength, and support so you could become the person you are today? What can you say to let them know that they are the best there is and that you hope you've inherited some of their wisdom and strength? What words would you say if you ever got the chance? 
Maybe you just say, I love you, Mom, or I love you, Dad, and hope they understand. The scientific and medical communities, along with the pharmaceutical industry, continue to make progress, but there are unfortunate known complications with myositis that contribute to the untimely death of patients. The study of autoantibodies in myositis is promising and may help diagnose, predict complications, and even determine treatment options. Complications can include things like infections, cancers, pulmonary complications such as interstitial lung disease, and complications associated with dysphagia, such as choking and aspiration, which can lead to dangerous pneumonias. Obtaining a quick diagnosis can help to improve outcomes for many patients. And while we have come a long way in being able to diagnose myositis, it still takes on average three and a half years with a handful of doctors involved and many patients are misdiagnosed. During those years, patients remain mis or undiagnosed this group of rare autoimmune diseases has a chance to continue wreaking havoc, causing damage to the muscles, skin, lungs, and other organs of the body. It may not seem like it to patients and families who suffer day in and day out, but there are many exciting things happening for myositis with clinical trials, research, and the release of new diagnostic and clinical trial criteria. The losses we have experienced can teach us many things and those of us still here can make our voices heard on behalf of our loved ones who we have lost. And in hoping for better treatments, we as patients need to become more involved. Rare disease patients can be difficult to find to enroll in clinical trials, and at MSU we are forming partnerships with pharmaceutical companies to help recruit patients for these important studies. This year, we have also partnered with Antidote Technologies for clinical trial matching. This technology makes it easier for patients to find clinical trials, provides an easier to read format, as well as questions to help narrow down studies for which patients may qualify. All clinical trials that are listed on clinicaltrials.gov are included in this matching program. Kathy. Kathy lived simply. She loved music, all God's creatures, and ice cream. In the picture that follows is Kathy at Rocky Mountain National Park on her way to a myositis conference in 2008. We have recently announced a new partnership with Portable Genomics for a pilot smartphone app. This app allows myositis patients to better track and manage important health-related data, such as certain blood tests, imaging studies, treatments, pain, biometrics, falls, and more. This app will allow patients to share data with their caregivers and healthcare teams. One goal of this app is to also allow patients to monetize their data and share, with their consent, with pharmaceutical companies and researchers in order to help drive research and development of medications and the potential for precision medicine for myositis. Vicki Johnson. Vicki was a loving daughter, wife, mother, and grandmother and is loved and missed beyond words. Dave Spevick.
Dave's wife, Linda, says, He worked as long as he could, and I retired to facilitate this. When the illness finally was gobbling him up, we discussed how to go forward. His mind was clear, literally, to his last breath. He fought to the end. We come together from the diversity of our grieving to gather in the warmth of this community, giving stubborn witness to our belief that in times of sadness there is room for laughter, in times of darkness there always will be light. May we hold fast to the conviction that what we do with our lives matter, and that a caring world is possible after all. Deputy Thomas J. Worthington Tommy. Tommy was a 39-year-old husband, brother, son, and friend to many that lost his battle in July 2012 when he succumbed to interstitial lung disease, a complication of dermatomyositis. Always lived his life to the fullest. His smile and energy warmed every room he entered. His wish was to one day help others battling his disease. Team Tommy Foundation was founded to make his dream come true. We honor Tommy as we remember him today for his strength and determination to make a difference for myositis. Tommy, you are loved and missed beyond measure. Continue to be our amazing angel from up above. Robert Landman When asked why she feels it is important to better awareness, Lauren Landman says, The answer to that is quite simple. It's because my family and I lost our dad to dermatomyositis. The severe physical pain and emotional stress he had to live with while struggling to find answers was unimaginable. Watching your parent go from being completely able-bodied to sick and unable to care for himself in just six months is something I cannot put into words. Perhaps the most frightening part of this whole experience was that he was misdiagnosed multiple times, thus delaying potential treatments that could have saved his life. The lack of knowledge and understanding of myositis in the medical community is detrimental and quite frankly, unacceptable. I wish simply to shed light on what needs to be changed in order to prevent others from experiencing the pain my dad endured. I do not say this with anger nor resentment, but rather passion and love in honor of my dad, Robert Landman, Although it saddens my family and I deeply to know, 
He had so much more of his life to live. It gives us happiness to know his story can help others. There are juvenile forms of the inflammatory myopathies, juvenile dermatomyositis, and even more rare, juvenile polymyositis. When children are diagnosed and then become adults living with the disease, they still carry the juvenile part of the diagnosis, as there are different complications associated at times with the juvenile forms. Our hearts go out to the parents and family members of children that have passed away from this disease. In honor and in memory of the children that we have lost to myositis, we release red balloons. Robert Butch Snyder. Butch's youngest, Brent, wrote the following words the night before his funeral. I guess the best way to start this is by saying he was definitely a great man, father, friend, brother, and just a great guy. Like everything in life, we had our ups and downs, and I know him his son because we had a hard time standing next to each other for more than five minutes. But it wasn't that hard because he couldn't stand still for that long. Everyone that knows him knows that. It's also the reason he had so many great friends and family. My dad, your friend, your brother, he was a go-getter, which is an understatement. He was always trying to help more people than he really could handle on his own, but like anything he did, he found a way to do it. He never could let the fun end. It actually seemed as if he were getting younger with age, trying to have as much fun and help as many of us out as he could in the short time he was with us. But that was Butch. I was talking with some of his friends and asking where his favorite place to stop was. Everyone said it didn't matter, anywhere. And over the years, I should have realized anywhere because he knew someone anywhere he went. And if he didn't, he would find someone to talk to. So the next time he went there, he would have a friend. I want to leave you with something that I try to tell myself every day. If I can do something just a little bit bigger today than I did yesterday, then today is a success. And if today I have to do something, I have to pull back and do something a little bit smaller than I did yesterday, but I can smile while I do it, then it's also a success. So I hope that you can take every day as it is, and tell yourself my body is working very hard to keep me upright or laying down, whichever it may be for you. And as long as you can smile about one thing, whether it's your family member or a flower you see or a bird flying or a bird singing outside your window, then you are not letting your myositis take over your life. I want to offer my sincere condolences to the family members of these myositis angels. As we were putting this video together, we were honored to learn more about your amazing family members and friends that are sadly no longer with us. Tommy Worthington, Joe Gayona, Jerry Norsick, Kathy, Vicki Johnson, Susie Edmondson, Butch Snyder, Robert Landman, and Dave Spevick. We thank you for sharing their names and their stories with us. I hope you will continue to share their stories to remind everyone that lives are at stake and behind the research, that is what truly matters, something the sponsors of this event realize. 
when companies want to hear directly from patients and take the time to do so. That says a lot about their values. Those are values we share. I would also like to take a moment to thank our caregivers, care partners, spouses, family members, and friends who help myositis patients live their best possible lives. Without your support, this disease can be very lonely. You make it possible for patients to do things they could no longer do without you. Myositis Awareness Month provides us a larger platform to reach out and to educate about the inflammatory myopathies. I hope we will all do our part in making that happen. We include information in this day of remembrance about the work we are doing and how patients, caregivers, and family members can get involved, not to tout our accomplishments, but to offer understanding that together, we can help others realize the urgent need for continued education, the need for new and effective therapies, the need for rare disease patients to participate in clinical trials, in ways we can provide better understanding and increased awareness of myositis. As a nonprofit, the work we do would never happen without the generous support of donors and sponsors. We thank those who have made a donation to MSU and those who consider making a donation in memory of or in honor of their loved one today. MSU has a long list of items we hope to achieve as a part of our mission and vision a dedication to improve the lives of myositis patients and to continue to empower the myositis community. If you or someone you know is interested in participating in a clinical trial, please visit the Clinical Trial Matching Program page on our website. On a final note, we hope you will consider joining our support groups. We offer support options for everyone in the myositis community. Support is essential, and with a rare disease like myositis, it can be difficult to find. Join us online and get the support you deserve. Learn more about myositis support and understanding and myositis at understandingmyositis.org. We thank each of you for joining us today for our first annual live streaming event, A Day of Remembrance.